G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Factor Modular Rifle, again. So, this weapon has gone through a couple of updates since I first recorded my video on this weapon, when it was first released, and yeah, that video pissed a lot of people off for some reason. But anyways, in that video I concluded that whilst this weapon was cool and fun to use, and unique looking, with good sounds, textures, meshes, and all that, it really wasn't doing anything to um, spice up this weapon to actually make it sort of uh, interesting to use. Whilst you did have a decent damage while shooting people with this, it really wasn't more usable or interesting to me than using any of the really well done Modern Firearms mod, because I guess the merit there is using real life weapons is kind of cool, and using a fictional thing um, that does basically the same thing but isn't real just really doesn't have the same merit. That's just my subjective opinion on it, but that has changed now. This thing has actually got a few barrels, which we'll see later, which actually make it feel unique, and you can actually change it into a um, energy weapon now, which definitely suits its modular name, so we'll get into those right away. And first of all, for the receivers, I can remember a couple of things about this. I haven't looked at this thing since making that video, but I remember there's only a few receivers here, and the way you actually change how this thing fires is by replacing the barrel. So that's a standard barrel, you've got an automatic variant of that. Something new here, it's called the electric barrel. This one fires alien blast rounds, has the alien blast around sound. But the projectiles move so much faster, so you don't have to worry about hitting people with uh, something slower than a spitball, which is good. You've also got a, um automatic variant of that. And then you've got a power barrel here, which if you're familiar with Lorenzo's Gamma Gun, you can go ahead and make this thing fire massive telekinetic balls of death, which is awesome. It does come with a limited ammo capacity, but yeah, that kind of balances it out a little bit. Something else new is the railgun attachment, which absolutely looks awesome. I'm actually looking forward to using this thing with the railgun attachment here, getting 570 damage there. Alright, looks pretty awesome. We're not going to install a suppressor on each of these new barrels, simply because that's just something that can't happen. Which, you know what, having a suppressor on these weapons would make it feel more unique and more usable. Mink, wink, nudge, nudge. But, you know what, I'm going to be fine without it. So what we'll do is go for an automatic electric barrel on this. I will eventually look at all of these in gameplay, but I just want to show you the attachments for this section here. There's got a couple of new sights here. There's one with a um, scope and a little um, reflex sight on top of it that I actually really like the look of. It's nice and tactical, but with that being over the top, we'll go for that recoil compensating stock there. It's a little bit deceptive with the names, but you can figure out that this is the most um, recoil compensating stock because it requires these to be rank 5, which you know what, it's a high level stock, so it's going to be good. Um, we're going to go close to the side, sure. That'll just change where you, um, where your eye is, where your character's eye is, viewpoint, when you aim down sight. So we'll go a little bit close because we're going to get a little bit of a look at the scope, which is apparently vault tech. Okay, we can give this a little bit of a zoom. We'll go for some two times. We don't need to go to um, over the top with it. And you can change the reticule, which is great. And there is heaps of these. So many that if I was sh to show you the, them, I'd probably be here for another 12 minutes. Let's just go for a nice cross in red. Righto, so we want to install a magazine on this, and that'll come in the form of power cells. So we'll be using a fusion cells, which obviously supports its energy weapon thing, and um, not sure how you've crammed eight fusion cells into that or whatever, but I don't really care. That mag actually looks really, really cool. And for the materials, I've only got the light pack because I wasn't keen on downloading an extra 200 megabytes of skins, but I actually do like this Fallen Angel skin. I think the chrome on this weapon works very well, especially for its... Future, uh, futuristic sense, sorry I misspoke there. Damage modifiers, I think they were there last time, which you can go up or down, which is interesting. So if you feel like this weapon is punching a hole too big on your targets, then you can reduce it a bit. Um, some more legendary modifications, but not all of them, interestingly enough. It's not going to give you then um, the uh, effect of uh, Furious here, so you know, that kind of um, sucks. Let's give it a penetrating effect. Why the hell not? Just improve our damage ever so slightly. So it's also got some laser sights and laser trackers. Laser sights will improve your hipfire accuracy and laser trackers will give you the recon scope effect on your targets. And you can actually have both 
either on which side. It doesn't really matter, let's go for that one. And that'll give you the best of both worlds, although it'll cost an extra perk. That's how they actually justify you, um, you know, the balance of that. And there's another legendary effect here, although this is added by a mod. If I was not using legendary modification, this would be the only legendary effect that I can get on it. Although it's not even showing up, there's not a penetrating or a star on this, so maybe it's one of those things that are added without adding those keywords or featured items. I'm talking in uh, creation kit things, let's just move on to some gameplay. Righto, so here we are in Gunners Plaza. Before we get into it, um, I just want to add a couple of notes. Um, you can actually craft this on a chemistry station as well as the new types of ammo. So if you're not actually sure where to find it, there, there you can start there. So we'll get started here. This one is loaded with or is equipped with the electric barrel of the automatic variety. So we should be able to kill these gunners in a nice timely fashion. We shall see. Now, none of these weapons are suppressed, so this sneaking business isn't going to last very long. So let's enjoy it while it lasts. We still have a little bit of a problem of the slow projectiles, but it's nowhere near as noticeable as it is if you're actually using the Alien Blaster. You know, compared to how the Alien Blaster was in Fallout 3, the Fallout 4 one was a huge disappointment. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting, but yep. We're getting some pretty good damage out of this. We're only using the fusion cells, uh, cell ammo, which is a dime a dozen when you get to the um, end game where you can pick these things up basically from everywhere. Even in the early game, you can let Dance clear out everybody since at the um, Arcjet systems and just loot every Institute pistol and fusion cell in sight. You can easily net up a couple of hundred there and going trade craft with Deacon and looting and just doing the same thing there. It'll net you quite a lot of fusion cells. I remember doing that in my one hit wonder run. But anyways, I'm actually pretty happy with this weapon now with its extra barrels. Let's move on to this one. This one is going to be firing the Lorenzo telekinetic balls. We don't seem to have nearly as much splash damage on these um, telekinetic projectiles, which um, is kind of nice because if it was actually firing the same ones with the same amount of splash damage, this thing would be way overpowered, but just gets you a little bit of a sliver of splash damage, which um, if enemies are packed in nicely, you can um, do a little bit of better damage to two people. There you go. There was that in that situation. So it's not going to be something that's completely overpowered. Speaking of overpowered, you've got an overpowered weapon in your hands, Captain Bridget. Gotta get rid of you. Oh, that'll bloody do it, alright. Now, be careful not to shoot this one to a um, wall or any sort of objects close to you because you'll definitely kill yourself with this thing very, very quickly. So yeah, that was the telekinetic one. This one is going to be our one with the gorse barrel there. We've got 35 rounds in a magazine here, which is huge for a sniper, so you can fire this thing for bloody days. I have um, upgraded the damage on this just a little bit just to offset the very hard difficulty sort of... Um, uh, a penalty that you get for damage but yeah I'm gonna shoot these gunners and once we're done with this I'll actually let you have a listen to what this weapon sounds like when it's firing in all of its forms although um, the alien blaster shooting one just sounds exactly like an alien blaster which is fine you don't really hear that a lot simply because you'd be better off not using an alien blaster so you know what it's nice to use that sound on a weapon that's actually viable using the futuristic scope for this if you want to create something similar. Listening to the sound of this, this is awesome. That's one of the coolest sounds that I've ever heard a weapon mod actually use. That's great. Righto, I'll let you hear this weapon now, so crank it up if it's a little bit too low. Awesome, moving over to Lorenzo's artifact thingy. Not sure how you get these sounds, but wherever they um, are coming from, they're good sounds, or if they're designed from scratch, then you've got some talent. 
like I said before, just some alien blaster sounds there, nothing too new, but there you have it, that was the Factor Modular Rifle in its various energy forms, there's some other versions of these, so yep, I think we'll chuck these aside, get ourselves an automatic Gorse one, and a semi-auto um, alien blaster shooting one, and yeah, we'll see how those work out. I got nothing else to say, I usually say it when I'm swinging the camera around, but okay, I'll just move on, I'll stop talking. Righto, so now I've got the 50 cal sniper because uh, last time somebody really wanted to hear that, so yeah, listen closely, cunt. Also, um, yeah, this thing, I, I think I noted that it didn't rate the damage all that high, so uh, what I did is just increase the damage mod uh, modifier until I saw a nice number for it, so yep, goodbye gunners. I really hope you can hear the weapon, alright? You can hear it, you can hear it over me talking, probably not. But yeah, that's the sound of it. Okay, now you can move on with your day. Okay, so yeah, that was just the sniper. Moving back over to our semi-auto alien blaster round shooting thing. Yep, I've also increased the damage on this as well because yeah, it was sitting just over 100 and I thought, nah. I want to have a little bit more punch out of this, especially on very hard difficulty. See, I can't even one-shot a Raider Veteran with this, you know, with uh, that damage boost, even with a sneak attack critical. Fortunately, she decided to flee instead of fight, which made her easy while she was uh, easier to kill while she was cowering there. There's a big old bear over here, I want to finish him off. There he is, sitting over there, we'll see how well we can do with this. I'm liking this scope even though it does uh, cut off a lot of the screen from you and the vertical animation sort of throws you off track, but you can generally go alright. I've also got that um, floating health bars which makes enemies super easy to see because you can see that through stuff. So um, yeah, that helps me keep track of it too, which is nice. Anyway, this is our automatic gorse rifle variant. I've also shortened the scope on this. Oh, we're using the top side of it. Awesome. Okay, looks like changing the zoom levels will actually decide whether you're using the sight. So it doesn't look like we're firing this as fast as we, oh, as fast as I thought we would, but that's okay. We've also added a damage boost onto this one as well, just so we can see through these super mutants. We'll actually have a fair fight against a super mutant warlord now, at least I think we will. We'll get in nice and close. Okay, we actually cheese that, but that's okay. We've got sneak attack criticals. That's like four times damage on this. We Let's still fly, didn't one shot it. Yes, I'm feeling like this is a little bit better. This is a much better experience. See, i always going on about how good no, the damage modifiers I'm actually I'm are, but I never actually you know, like to show them in use. Maybe I think it cheapens the weapon, I don't know. But yes, being able to balance your own weapon with that is something that is actually awesome. Also, for some reason this thing must be quiet, because if I'm firing a ballistic weapon, usually every super mutant there and their mother are on to me at the moment. So uh, yeah, looks like this thing is reasonably quiet. Or either that or the Fallout 4 AI hasn't really decided to work properly. Which, you know what, I wouldn't put it past Bethesda. None of these guys even have weapons. What is their deal? Alright, we'll switch back over to our um, 50 cal over here. Ooh, liking that explosive damage. I don't remember it being explosive last time, so yeah, that'll give it an edge. Even without the damage increases that I've added to it. There we go. Right, or just a couple more left. I think it might be a super mutant warlord. Yes, it is. We'll just pop a crit in his head. Bam. And a dogger in here. And some other dude. He goes for his super sled. If a red roach hits as hard as an explosive 50 cal, then you've got a red roach problem. All right, on to the main event. Let's kill a Gerald. And uh, let's soften him up with a little bit of a vats run with our 50s. Oh, this is going to hurt him. I'm actually wondering where he took that damage from. I'm pretty sure I cleared out all the gunners that were there. Maybe they got a couple of shots in on him.
I am definitely liking the look of the Mo Factor rifle with the sniper um, scope and also barrel and I think that suits it really well. Switch over to our semi-auto one. Don't think we can get a sniper bonus on this because it's not an actual scope, it's more of a see-through thing. Okay, we're gonna have to run away here. We, <laughs> we came that close to dying also. Let's just uh, glitch our way to reloading this thing and uh, quickly kill Gerald with our Nerd Rage bonus. And then we'll clean the rest of these guys up with a little bit of gun fu action. That'll finish you. And we'll use a cheeky crit on you. Ooh, was that barrel glowing hot? I think I'm gonna die in bats. No, I didn't. I didn't die in bats. That's... Ooh. Okay, that's good. We, we're not dead yet. All right, we'll wait until we've got a full AP bar. We'll get some gun through action happening here. Two, number three, and four. Let's see how the RNG gods treat us. Not good enough. We'll go for a crit now that we've got one on Super Mutant number three. And the last one will be an automatic crit. Hell yeah. Okay, back to the energy stuff here. Well, we're definitely suppressing him, that's alright. It looks like we found the merit in having a 35 round mag in this thing. Maybe you don't have to have a mag like that if you're using this thing in a sniper way, but it is nice having that extra space when you can just hose down Super Mutant slowly but surely like that. And yeah, Mr. Impact in you, why the hell not? Righto, so there you go, that was the new and improved and updated Factor Modular Rifle. And whilst I said it was worth the download in my first round of uh, this weapon, I definitely think this thing being unique in the fact that it, you can actually modify it into an energy weapons platform, um, assuming you still consider Ghost Rifles energy weapons from Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Yes, this thing is definitely worth the download now. It's a little, it's a little bit on the... Um, heavy side in terms of megabytes. I've got the light version which came in and I think is like a couple of hundred megabytes, but like the full version with all of the skins, it's it's gonna sting you like 400 megabytes, so yeah. It's a, it's a fairly hefty mod for what it is, but you know what, I think it is worth it. So yeah, check out the links in the description if you wanna see this weapon for yourself in your game. Thank you for watching guys. I can't remember if it's ported to Xbox, but links will be down there if it is.